In continuity to the previous lesson, we are going to get introduced to new terms, two of them. First one is plasmolysis and the second one is the types of cells on the basis of nucleus present inside it. We did talk about it, recall it, what were the two types before we uh, start it, if you can. First thing is that we have to talk about plasmolysis. In the previous lesson, we had talked about cell wall that was present inside the, that was present in the plant cells. That was the case. That is how the plant cell was distinguished from those of animal cells uh, components. Then we have uh, the other thing, we will come to it if you can recall it. By the time we start that topic, how many types of cells are there in the basis of nucleus present, try to recall it. First of all, see this. Now we talked about that there is a cell wall present inside the plant cell. Let us draw the structure of plant cell. Supposedly this is the plasma membrane. Here lies the huge nucleus, there are organelles, we are not going to consider those though. This is the cytoplasm, the lightly stained, we did talk about it as well. This is the darkly stained nucleus, there lies the plasma membrane. Outside to plasma membrane, there is a cellulosic cell wall. So this is how we have the plant cell, right? You can practice drawing it because the more you draw, the more you learn. So, th this is the simplest diagram and if you can draw better than mine, it will be good because I do not have a good hand in drawing though. So, this is the typical plant cell. Now, we had talked about osmosis earlier, right? What was osmosis? Osmosis that, uh, osmosis was the condition where whenever there was higher concentration of the solution, the water will rush towards it or the solvent would rush towards it. That is what we had. I would give you the example. Supposedly, we had talked about that egg activity as well, where we kept that egg without the shell inside the higher concentration of solution that was highly concentrated, more concentrated than the egg itself. So, what happened that the water that was present inside the egg came out towards that concentrated solution. It came out in that concentrated solution. In the opposite condition, what happened was that the egg when it is present without the shell in a lower concentration solution, the water that was present in the solution moved towards the egg and the size of egg increased, right? This is what was there in the activity which I told you and we took a brief idea. Now, th this is what basically osmosis is. Now, what you have to remember is this higher concentration solution with respect to the egg. Please pay attention. The solution is more concentrated with respect to the egg. Then we call it hypertonic solution. And in the other case, we have hypotonic solution. Remember these two terms. Coming back to plasmolysis. Supposedly, this is kept in a solution. The cell is kept in a solution which is having lot more water, lot more water as compared to that present in the cytoplasm. I am telling you it is water, okay. So, what will happen? The water that is present in higher concentration over here, it would try to move inside. But in the opposite case, that is plasmolysis we are going to study. We do not have to deal with what if the water is more. Supposedly, this is a highly concentrated solution in comparison to the cytoplasm, what would happen is that the protoplasm which includes this plasma membrane and the cytoplasm, it would start shrinking because water would move out. So, it will shrink a little bit, okay. Then more water would move out, it would shrink a little bit more. Then more of water would go out, the shrinking would continue and at one stage, the protoplasm would get devoid of water, it would be separated from the membrane totally. 
separated from this empty space would be filled by this fluid only okay because more and more of it comes in constant in connect contact not concentration and more of cytoplasm moves out so this condition where the protoplasm shrink, shrinks so what is plasmolysis lysis means breakdown of something so protoplasmic breakdown you can call it when the protoplasm shrinks in the presence of a highly concentrated hypertonic solution this is what you have to understand all right so we have the protoplasm of the plant cell shrinking greatly in the presence of a hypertonic solution what if in place of plant cell we had animal cell over here it will not have the cell wall it is going to shrink more and more and what if it is not concentrated it is going to burst because it does not have a cell wall that is the difference that is why we don't give direct water we don't put the medicine that is injected in our body in water itself supposedly you inject water inside your veins where the injection is given that is going to cause a lot of pain inside your body because cells are going to burst and that would be a dangerous condition that is why we don't use it just an example i quoted so this is what we have to understand about plasmolysis and it could be asked uh, to you with reference to the cell wall and and it is often observed in the plant cells okay moving further by now if you can recall the two types of as i told you in the beginning by the time we end this you should be able to recall the two types of cells on the basis of presence of nucleus because we talked about nucleus in the previous lesson next we are going to deal with what is the significance of nucleus in classifying the cells into two types first one being prokaryotic and the other one being eukaryotic could you remember it or not not remember you're going to remember it now could you recall it i would say if you could recall it then that's good bravo to your memory if not no problem we are going to understand it and learn it because earlier it was just learning now we are going to understand what it is about see we had talked about nucleus that it has dna inside it it is the hereditary material it is well arranged it has a nuclear membrane around it like the cell has a plasma membrane the nucleus has a nuclear membrane around it remember that thing that nuclear membrane is a double membrane structure that separates the nucleus from the cytoplasm now supposedly this is your cytoplasm again we just took an introduction to the nucleus in that lesson now we are going to see that supposedly this is the nucleus that i'm talking about it would be having two nuclear membranes now whenever we are going to refer to membrane that membrane would be somewhat similar to the plasma membrane only there is a double membrane structure there are nuclear pores in between okay which connect the cytoplasm and the content of the nucleus that is the chromatin material this is what is nucleus all about now in the case of classification of the cell the cells are broadly categorized for the classification purpose into two categories one is prokaryotic and other is eukaryotic now this word can be the basis of understanding why because the nucleus is otherwise known as karyon okay the other name or the latin name for nucleus is karyon what we call as nucleus that is often termed as karyon as well so you have to remember that nucleus is the karyon now this karyon word you can see over here or oh, instead of karyon what you have the, what they have written not they what i have written or what is being used is you separate this karyo you can see karyon word over here so let's take this karyotic word referring to karyon itself now in terms of latin only this is karyotic that means the classification of whatever we are doing that is on the basis of nucleus now if this word is having a meaning this word is also going to have a meaning what that meaning is that pro means what that comes in beginning this this pro is not the one who is quite uh, 
superior in his or her skills, it's not that pro. This pro is what comes in the beginning or what was present earlier. So this is primitive nucleus. What comes early in terms of living beings is often primitive, okay? That is why we call it, because we are dealing with living things, because we are dealing with living content, that is the cell, because we are dealing with the nucleus, we are going to consider this pro in the terms of that came earlier and whatever comes earlier in the living things, that is often considered as primitive. So we have primitive nucleus, Kirion stands for nucleus, okay? So the nucleus that is not properly nucleus, that was present in the beginning, that was primitive. So prokaryotic cells have a nucleus which is primitive. Coming to the other one, this is again referring to nucleus, this means true, you means true, okay. You have to remember this that the meaning of you, wherever you are going to find it, it would mean true and the carry-on word is pointing towards nucleus. So in this case, we have a true nucleus. And whenever we talk about true nucleus, it is this thing, the one we have discussed. So the reference is being made to the nucleus that we have discussed. So that means when this, con this concept is coming to you, that the true nucleus is the one that we have discussed in the previous lesson we talked about. Now we talked about that there is a double membrane structure, there is DNA inside it, chromatin material with proteins associated to it, there would be nuclear pores, that would be the central part, that means we are referring to the eukaryotic cell. For understanding the prokaryotic cell, we need to understand something new because this is different from that. The difference is, point of difference is nucleus itself. Now what would be the nucleus in the case of prokaryotic cells? All you have to understand is that there would be no nuclear membrane, okay? Second thing we had talked about that in the case of eukaryotic cells, there was chromosome, there were chromosomes, okay, chromatin material well arranged, there was chromatin material, the chromatin material was well arranged in chromosomes. Over here, you don't find such thing. First of all, the nuclear membrane is missing. Primitive nucleus is not called nucleus, it is called nucleoid. We study in detail about it in higher classes, but for now it is called nucleoid. Just remember this thing. It's not the nucleus, it is nucleoid. And uh, then we have this nucleoid is not having chromosomes as well. What it is having? It is having chromatin material with no membrane. So we have the scattered chromatin material that lies hither and thither inside the cell well present inside the cytoplasm. So that is the nucleoid primitive nucleus which is present. Apart from these uh, differences, there is another difference, quite uh, striking difference that all the prokaryotic cells do not have membrane bound organelles. The organelles which are surrounded by membrane, when we study about organelles, you will know that which ones are surrounded by membrane and which ones are not surrounded by membrane. So the organelles which are not surrounded by membrane would be present. In this case, whether surrounded by membrane or not, they are going to be present because this is an advanced, advanced stage of cell organization, cellular organization. So in the case of uh, organelles which are not present, uh, which are not having double membrane, first one is ribosomes. Remember this term, we are going to come to it. Second one is mesosome. This is another organelle that is present. Then we have, just for now, just remember this ribosome and mesosome and ribosomes would be present over here as well. Here we have lot many organelles like mitochondria. Of course, nucleus is there. Then we have um, chloroplasts or you can say plastids. Then we have endoplasmic reticulum, new terms, different terms, different meanings they have. Don't get baffled by the names if you are hearing it for the first time because as these two terms were quite confusing when you started with, 
now you know what it means when you come to these you are going to understand these as well another one is Golgi bodies named after a famous scientist known as Camilo Golgi who discovered a lot who studied a lot investigated a lot about neural cells so these are the parts of the eukaryotic cell so you can very well imagine the complexity of the cell this was all about the two terms that we had to understand in this lesson